You remember Spike TV? Vaguely. I remember it. Yeah, I yeah. Watching. Spike TV. They had a show called Mansers back in the day. The um, question that they posed was, how can you tell if a girl is on psychiatric medication simply by looking at her? The answer was, if she has fake boobs. The explanation was, an abnormally high number of women who get plastic and cosmetic surgery also suffer from this list of mental illness, anxiety, uh, depression, uh, self-esteem issues, and the, you know, the things that go along with that. If I was giving advice to my 17-year-old brother and he's saying, you know, this 18-year-old girl who got a BBL, I would tell him she might be more too, too expensive for you. And I'm not just talking about money-wise. I'm talking about headache-wise. I'm talking about time investment. I'm talking about how often you're going to need to validate her, how often you're going to need to entertain her, how often you're going to need to uh, reaffirm her because she can't affirm herself, Right how you might have to step into a daddy role in her life that you're not ready for. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. I'm hype. This is going to be fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> now I'm nervous. Should have took my medication. <laughs> Man, you'll be all right. Take you'll be all right. Like, oh, You're in good nurse. hands. <laughs> you are with a black man. You're in good hands. We're going to talk about that, too. What? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Oh. I'll explain. Okay, so um, I just asked you about some of your uh, questions, curiosities when it comes to men, particularly the black men. And you were talking about how um, we benefit from a system, patriarchy. Um, and I want you to elaborate on that. I don't want to misquote you. I was saying, I don't understand the some of the, uh, I guess, anger, misplaced anger towards women because women didn't create the system. Black men didn't necessarily create the system either, but they decided to, they wanted, in general, generally speaking, that they wanted to uphold a lot of what the white man wanted to uphold and live within his society and, you know, be not, I guess, live like that. So now that things are changing, a lot, a lot of men don't want to, they don't necessarily want to be looked at as their value is just based off of what they make. But like I was telling you, that's not something women created. We were placed ancestors you know we're placed with men and that's what they had to do because you know we didn't have rights at a point in time in history and different things like that so i feel like how are you mad now at the women that are still expecting that when this is not a system that women created also um what i said also, like the 50-50 thing, that's cool <laughs> if that's cool if it works. Okay. For because times are hard, you know, inflation is real. So I get it. But with that comes, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I don't I don't believe in 50-50 relationship. Thing. And when I say that, I don't mean I'm not talking about money because I feel like in general, you're supposed to give your all and you're supposed to help out where you need to help out regardless to whatever. But I just feel like why are men mad at a system that women did not did not create? Like I told you, we do participate and right. perpetuate a lot, and uphold a lot of the patriarchy views and things like that, but it's what we were taught. Do you, do you, um, 
like when you say men are upset with women, what what have you seen that look like? What you mean, like? Like what what are some examples? So like some people might say Kevin Samuel, some people might say the internet, Instagram, me. It's definitely the internet. It's, okay. it's me scrolling down Facebook. <laughs> what are you seeing? <laughs> what, what, what are you seeing on Facebook? Man, y'all women. Y'all only want us for our money and things like that. And the main one saying that ain't even got it, but that's another story for another day. But um, y'all, men are worth, you know, men, we're more more than what we have in our pockets. We, we want this, we want that. And, you know, com- basically complaining in a sense about being the provider, but yet still wanting to be the head. You know, so it's just like, I don't want to say you can't have it both ways, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of pick what, pick the fight. Like, what are you fighting? Like, you can't complain. Yeah. It's not saying, I I don't believe your value should just be what you make, but you have women who are going to naturally want a man who is able to take care of home. Okay, let, let's let's handle these things one at a time because it's it's a lot. Um, let's do this. You ask me a question because I've been a man for a while. So whether whether it's a question that you've already posed or something that you just thought of, what would you like me to address as far as these things? The anger or the fifty fifty or the why do you um, why do you feel? men may be slightly upset with women, you know, based off of them being um, looked at as looked at as only what they can do financially for a woman. Like, do you think, um, do you think they should be upset? Do you think, how do you feel about that? Do you think they should be mad at women in particular, especially black women? Mm-hmm. So one of the reasons I started this channel and this series in particular is because, you know, so I started We Need to Talk in 2013. Mm. So I've been having these conversations for a while. And what I what I noticed is that Men are saying one thing, women are hearing another. Women are saying one thing, men are hearing another, right? And women think that men are simply just angry at them because of, you know, expectations, the whole nine. But at the core of that anger, what I'm hearing from men and also what I've experienced in my own life is it's a, I can't win for losing. It's a, even when I do all the, things you tell me that a good man is supposed to do. Uh, you still talk down to me like I'm a boy. Even when I treat you like the queen that you claim to be, um, you still choose a shitty guy over me, right? So um, the complaints that I think are valid, and these are the only ones I can really address, are the complaints of men who are actually doing what they're supposed to do. You know, the men who are, whether it's making the six figures, whether it's conscientious, whether it's emotionally intelligent, whatever women say we're not doing enough of. Um, In my experience as a man and in my experience as a researcher, the men who get the most shit are the ones who are doing all the things that they're supposed to do. So I think black men at this point, now that we have podcasts that people are saying we need to throw away and all that good stuff, now that we have the mic, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, We're... we might not always do the best job at articulating what it is that we're trying to say, what it is that we feel, but we're trying to say, listen, I'm a person too. I have feelings too, right? Um, And one of the big things, and I did want to, I'm gonna throw this back at you, right? One of the big things that men feel, especially from our women, is your default setting is he ain't shit until he's proven otherwise, mm-hmm. right? And we talk about that in the context of like white supremacy and how white people think we are criminals or Jezebels or whatever the case may be until we show that we sound like them and we have the same education. But a lot of black men, especially the educated ones, uh, get that same 
interaction with our women. So why do you think we feel that way? Why do you think that is? I feel like, I feel like everyone's feelings are valid, but I feel like it could be, I don't want to say it that way, but Say it how in it a is. Sense, Listen, it's kind of like PG. it's no. It, it could be. I feel like a lot of times it's the type of person. This is the type of person maybe that good guy is also choosing. The type of woman, because what I tend to see a lot is men that do well for themselves. This and that. They want a certain aesthetic a lot of times okay okay and that particular let's just say the instagram girl bls <laughs> the bbls yeah. the toddler hair all right. of that so it's they want a certain aesthetic but the women with that not all of them of course but typically the women with that certain aesthetic is going to have a certain attitude about themselves and way about themselves there's a lot of men in their dms more than likely and I feel like they may get that girl. She might go out with him because he can spend money, whatever it is. And I almost feel like in a sense, they're trying to turn that woman into what he wants her to be, but she's not that girl. Mm. So maybe, maybe they, if you're feeling that way, you might just have to, look at a different aesthetic so, and it's not just a, i'm sorry no go ahead it's go ahead. not just about the way you look but you know i i noticed that what because i see guys say things they, they they'll post a certain type of girl this and this and that and then in the next breath you're mad at the carishas and stuff like that but that's the look you're constantly posting and Things like that. So I, I don't get it. I feel like it's very, a lot of contradiction going on. So so first and foremost, I think that's a fantastic point. I think, um, you know, I say this to women all the time. Like, why are you with him? Why did you pick him? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because you end up dealing with what it is that you choose. Um, so that's valid. That's completely valid. However, when I'm talking about the... Um, low expectations. I'm not even relegating that to romantic relationships. I'm talking about, for instance, um, one of my subscribers, he DM'd me his testimony mm. about being at, uh, I think he was at Home Depot or Lowe's, and he literally watched the black clerk offer better customer service to the white guy than was offered to him. Right. Um, whereas the white guy didn't have to offer any extra receipts or anything like that. There was extra scrutiny on this black man. Mm. Now, it would be one thing if he had a pooky aesthetic, whatever the case may be. But like you go to this dude page, he's wearing suits like he's that type of dude. So even if maybe he was he had a do rag on that day, there should be a sense of I see you, black man. I see you, black woman. You know what I'm saying? We're just in our natural state. I'm doing some shit. But there was still that same suspicion, that same condescension that we talk about seeing from white people. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that is the meat of what it is that I'm talking about. But the other thing is, unfortunately, unfortunately, men are visual creatures. We going to start negotiations on how you look. I mean, I get it. You know, how our loins react to you. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, as much as I encourage men to get to the point where, you know, you're past that and it's more about, OK, what, what can she do for you? And how can she improve your life? How can you guys improve each other? Um, that's kind of where we're starting the negotiation. So, like, do you think... <laughs> If you had to give men advice on how to make the distinction, because sometimes it might be hard for us between a potentially good woman and the BBL crew, <laughs> what would you... Uh, I don't want to make it seem like just because you got a BBL that you, you know, that type of girl, but because that's not necessarily true. Have a conversation. Actually talk. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, verbal conversation. Because one thing I noticed is people trying to get to know people through text. And I feel like you're not going to be able to know the distinction. You can't just go off of the way she looked because you could be surprised that this girl with the BBL might be intelligent, the girl, the type of woman you like and all of that. But I feel like it has to be, a, you have to have conversation, like true conversation. Of course you um, got to like the way they look. But I feel like... You can't go into it only paying attention to possibly what it you like. You might see what you like and that's fine, but you got to really look at the person and really have in-depth conversations with them. I really think it's it takes conversation and just getting to know somebody. I, I don't think it's really, I'm not going to say it's not that hard because things take time and people grow different ways over time. And then you learn more about people over time. But initially, I'm noticing a lot of guys don't even want to really have conversations. Like, just talk. Just talk. <laughs> like, talk. Like, you can you call me, we can hang out. Like, talk. I feel you. I feel you. Um, before that, mm -hmm. um, so I would be... If if I was my little brother, seventeen, right? Mm. So if I was giving him advice, I would say if she has a BBL, just go ahead and put her in the plaything category. Just as a dude, that's how I would do it. So the, okay, I get what you say. The, the, the initial exactly okay. that initial. So like initially, from you know you're on the inside. I'm a dude. You're on the inside looking out. Like what are some things that we can use to differentiate between? A potential somebody who's potentially worth investing the time to converse with and dialogue and figure out if it's gonna work and somebody who needs to just be a plaything. Okay, so before the conversation, if you to me, if you see her, I wouldn't say if she has a BBL, don't talk I'm explain, to her. I'm explain. I'm explain. But I got you. does she have a mm, I'm gonna explain, I promise. Go mm, ahead. <laughs> it's like does she, I do feel like that person's aesthetic will tell you a lot about how they are. If she looks, if you were walking down the street and she looks like a typical clone version of what you see on Instagram with the BBLs, the super hair, long hair to the ankles, all of that stuff, the long baby hairs and super long nails, lashes that are, might be, I would say sometimes ridiculous, but- um, So you're trying to be nice. I am trying to be nice because here's the thing, because I don't, as a black woman, I don't want to sit here and down another black woman for how she chooses to look. Mm -hmm. It may not be my cup of tea, but I don't want to make it seem like it's she's wrong for how she look. If that's what she chooses to do and how she chooses to look, then that's her. Because that doesn't equate to her being a bad person, a thigh or whatever they call them nowadays. I don't know. But uh, it doesn't equate to that. But it does tell you that this person, it could tell you that this person is probably into... Maybe they're probably into this type of music because you're. If you look that way, nine times out of ten, you're going to be into a certain type of artist. And if you know, if you think about it, and you're kind of like, well, that's not really my vibe. If it's not your vibe, then you already know. Don't, don't go with that. If you see a girl who's uh, more, uh, what they would say, I guess, like earthly and things like that. Free spirited. And free spirited, and um, and you know, you like in the streets and stuff like that. Don't bother that woman. Leave her alone. Like, cause I just you gotta go with what you what you vibe with to a certain to some to some extent. So I don't know. But why you think the BBL girl should have no love? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Everybody so, all right, knows. so boom, right? Um, you remember Spike TV? 
vaguely. I remember it. Yeah, but I remember yeah. Watching. Spike TV. They had a show called Mansers back in the day. Now, I never did the research to validate this claim, but I think it helps make the point. But the um, question that they posed was, how can you tell? And mind you, this was like early 2000s. But like, how can you tell if a girl is on psychiatric medication simply by looking at her? The answer, and again, I don't have the stats to back it up. I'm just be honest and transparent. But the answer was, if she has fake boobs. It's a white show, then titties, boobs, you know? So um, the explanation was... Um, typically, apparently there's an, an, an abnormally high number of women who get plastic and cosmetic surgery also suffer from this list of mental illness, anxiety, uh, depression, uh, self-esteem issues, and the, you know, the things that go along with that. Um, so obviously it's not foolproof, but typically if a girl augments her body, she does not feel comfortable about herself. And typically, um, it's kind of a slippery slope sometimes, you know, especially when you consider the medical system is going to try to upsell you. Well, you know, your nose could be a little bit, you know, this and that. So therefore, if I was giving advice to my 17-year-old brother and he's saying, you know, this 18-year-old girl who got a BBL, I would tell him, she might be more too too expensive for you. And I'm not just talking about money-wise. I'm talking about headache-wise. I'm talking about time investment. I'm talking about how often you're going to need to validate her, how often you're going to need to entertain her, how often you're going to need to uh, reaffirm her because she can't affirm herself, right? How you might have to step into a daddy role in her life that you're not ready for, right? So I think men who've been in the streets... You know, we've seen certain patterns, you know, we've seen certain things that are consistent. And what I've been trying to tell women, and I can't remember uh, the brother on Instagram who went viral recently for saying it better than I could, but he said, men don't like BBLs, we like naked women. And women with BBLs tend to be naked, uh -huh. right? So this idea that um, women are doing this very dangerous surgery, like BBLs, freaking dangerous as hell for male attention is not accurate because it's only certain males who gravitate towards that type of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. You know, all males want to sleep with it because we're, we're, we're men. Right. Mm -hmm. But as far as, you know, what kind of man is going to want to be with you, it's going to be rapping. It's going to be peacock guys. Right. The who? Peacocks. I call them peacocks. Oh, because shiny feathers, okay. shiny, oh, oh. ostentatious. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never thought about um, it. And unfortunately, I think what makes this a little bit complicated, and we'll get into it, you know, women are hypergamous. Um, it's a word that I didn't know until YouTube. But basically, <laughs> hypergamy just means women go after the best possible option you're wired to. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, uh, the metaphor is that women's eyes are looking straight and up. They're not looking down. So whether it's a man who is literally shorter than you, you won't see him. Who makes less money than you, who's less educated than you, you won't see him. Or who doesn't have a certain level of clout that you feel like is to your level or above these days. Most women won't see him. And that's why um, since the rappers and the Club promoters want BBLs. The idea is that men want BBLs mm -hmm. when the vast majority of men are here mm -hmm. beneath your line of sight. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I, I do agree that um, I think, I guess to me, it's kind of obvious if you change something on your body, it was an insecurity. Right. Like you're not changing your body, be, you know, through surgery because you just want to know you didn't like it. So that I will say, now that's the thing I don't like <laughs> that some women do. I will say it does bother me because it's just like, if you're going to get the surgery, fine. But stand on it and be honest. Mm. You're insecure about what it is that you're changing. And we all have something on us 
that we maybe wish was a little different. Some may go the natural route and just do some squats and some do the surgery. 